Hey, what's up, everybody? <clears throat> PK here. Here with a new topic. That uh, this this uh, my title might sound familiar because it's I think Nike's logo or Nike's kind of saying, "Just do it." That's kind of how I don't live my life 100% by this creed. I'll admit that. It's more like a a 60/40. But when you do just do it. It's one of the better things you can really ask for in your life, and you might be asking PK exactly what do you mean by just do it. Sometimes in life, you have to be assertive. And by, when I say by that, what I say by that is that you don't always have to, uh... Some people are too nice, you know, the whole I can't say no thing. That's a problem that occurs, you know, in America, in this generation, my generation. I'm 18 right now, so this is my generation that it happens with. There are times when you can't just be nice and say no there are times when you have to say yes there's times when you have to do stuff for yourself and that's how you get shit done and you might not think so you might think the opposite but I assure you that's how you get it done I'll do a, uh, a commentary tomorrow on how I got started on the drums but it's because I decided to be assertive and I decided that I wanted to play drums for my church so I told the guy they weren't looking for drummers and I told the guy I want to drum can I start drumming for the church? And I told him, and most people would be like, oh, he said no, they're not looking. No, you have to be assertive. Get it in there that you're assertive. Not Don't be bothersome where you ask him and text him every single day, but be assertive. Be assertive. Assert yourself healthy, if that makes any sense. And kind of when they say no, don't bother them all the time, but make it kind of let it known that it's an issue that's bothering you that you want whatever they've got you know what you want baby I got it cuz you have to be assertive and take control of what's gonna happen and I, I know it's kinda deviating it's a little mini rant a tangent if you will inside this commentary but what I mean by that is that there are times when things uh, you're gonna think about something and then you're gonna end up not doing it and one of those examples is I had a cousin a cousin of mine not a friend and uh, he was terrified of roller coasters. And every time we were about to get on the roller coaster, he'd start uh, freaking out. And then right when he sat down, we were about to go. And then he'd say, no, I can't do this. And he'd have to get off. It was a real pain in the ass. Because I wouldn't go any to, like, any... I wouldn't go to Six Flags with him. I wouldn't go to Knott's. If I did, I'd he'd stay back. And then I wouldn't let him stay back. It's a dick thing to do. Go to Knott's with someone and then just let him wait everywhere. And I know it's kind of a dick thing that he's holding me back from going on some rides but anyways so every time he would go on a ride he'd start thinking about how bad the ride was and then he'd think twice and then not go on it that's something that you shouldn't be doing you should just do it and what I mean by this is that a couple of weeks ago not a couple of weeks ago this has been like a couple of months ago actually he we went to a Knott's Berry Farm and I told him not to think about it just close your eyes get on the roller coaster and don't think about absolutely anything. And uh, you guys might think this is simple, um, you know, just don't be afraid of the roller coaster. But to him, it was a terrifying ordeal. It was really, really scary. Oh, I need a burp to go on this roller coaster. So he was freaking out, but I kept calming him down, telling him don't think about it. And then eventually, the roller coaster ride locked, and we started moving. He couldn't go back. Now he started thinking about it, and he was. He wasn't crying, but he was very, very, very scared. He did not want to go on the ride. He kept begging to be let out, and it it hurts. <laughs> it hurts your feelings. It hurts the feels, I guess, when, like, your own cousin or, like, someone that you really care about starts, like, crying. Not crying, but, like, they're so desperate to get off something or they're so desperate to not do something and you know that it's your fault that they're doing it in the first place but it helped him out in the end because he was like screaming he didn't want to go he was trying to get out but he couldn't because the ride was locked and at the end of the roller coaster he stopped and he said it wasn't that bad and now he goes on roller coasters all the time he takes his girlfriend there every once in a while to six flags and he goes on silver bullet and it's a fucking blast i don't go with him but i assume it's a blast because six flags I don't know, Six, Six Flags is kind of 50-50. I like Knott's better just because Six Flags has a lot of roller coasters, but they're not. It's just roller coasters, so there's always long-ass lines, and it, I don't know, it's a bother. Anyways, 
That's what I mean by don't think it through. Because if he thought it through again, and I wasn't there to kind of slow him down and tell him not to... Oh, I tried to call him the KM. <laughs> what a fail. Good thing the, uh, it went away. It's like a call him in. Anyways, um, so you shouldn't think about it. If I wasn't there to calm him down and he thought about it, he would have gotten let out the ride and he wouldn't have gone back. And then it would have cycled again so that he'd keep on doing the same thing. He's about to go... The ride's about to start, and then he bitches out at the end. That's not what you should be doing. You shouldn't think about it. And now, let me bring this to an example that's a bit more down-to-earth for everybody. Or for guys, more, uh, you know. Uh, you see that cute chick, like, right across the uh, the way from you? You kind of just have to go do it and talk to her. And I know that sounds like something that's blasphemy and that's scary. And I was there. I was there for a long time. You Trust me, man. I'm not... Like, uh, yeah, I came out the womb, like, chatting bitches up <laughs> all the time. It's not how it worked. I was a pretty shy guy. It wasn't until I got rejected for the first time I really started opening up, and this was, uh, mm, eighth grade, I think. Eighth grade? Um, eighth, seventh grade, I got my first girlfriend. No, it was ninth grade. Ninth grade, there we go. Maybe that's a bit sad. Eighth, seventh grade, I got my first girlfriend. And then, ninth grade was this girl that I really liked, and I was super sure that she was into me, but I was too much of a bitch to make a move. And I knew she was into me because, like, we'd talk a lot. We wouldn't text or anything because I, I... Did I have a phone? I don't remember. I think I did, but I just don't like texting, period. Like, even now, I rarely text. Anyways, but, like, she'd talk to me all the time, and she'd laugh at everything I'd say, and I'd catch her looking at me. But then, when the time came when I asked her, I think I asked her too late, and she just kind of got over it because she was like oh I'm sorry I, I can't and you'd expect like I know what the position that you guys are in right now that you guys think oh dude like that's what I don't want I don't want her to say no when she said no you would think that I would feel like I, I'm about to die like nothing can be worse than this I felt alleviated like I felt relieved on the inside because there's no more of this uh, is is she does she does she not or whatever bullshit I just did it she said no, and it got over with. I promise you, by the next hour, I was already over it. I was like, because it was a, at the, she was in my last period of school, so as soon as school was over, I asked her. She said no. I went home, I ate, and I was over it. That's what, it's not that bad. Trust me, especially when you're in high school. I just graduated last year. High school is nothing. I tell you that. If you think high school is like, if your popularity in high school, or if you're not popular, that that's the end of life, that if something gets out and, you fuck up or something, it's gonna be the story of the school. Trust me, no one gives a shit. Like, especially being gay in high school is a big thing. People will hate on gays, and it's not right. I don't, you know, I don't hate on anyone. Like, especially I'm anti-racist. Um, I really, really hate racism with a passion. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, people, if you're gay in high school, it's like, it's over. A lot of people are, you know, they hate you, they call you faggot and all this shit. In college... I took a class. Uh, I took a class last semester. Some chick just openly admitted she was gay, and no one said anything. There was no. <gasps> no one looked at her twice. They didn't even look her way. It was just like normal. That's what college is. High school is such a minuscule part of your life. You don't even realize it. So when you get rejected by the girl, you think that you're like the laughing stock of the whole uh, school. You're really not. And even if you are, it's nothing compared to what the rest of your life is going to be. And that's what I mean by just do it. And if you want an example where it worked out today, uh, today I started my first semester of college. Not my first semester, I should say. It's, uh, I think, my fourth, third semester. And uh, I went to my philosophy class. There we go. Went to my philosophy class, and uh, a cute chick sat to my right. And uh, like I was thinking about it the whole time, and I was like, ah, I don't want to talk to her, can't. Like, but if she has a boyfriend, oh, I can't, I'm, I'm, no, 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 oh, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna stop. And then I put my head down, like a little bitch. And then I kept thinking about it, and then that's when I realized, thinking about it, thinking is something that your mind does to keep you safe. It's what your mind does to keep you safe. When you think about a situation, it's because your mind's trying to say, we gotta keep safe, man. I don't wanna, uh, you know, I don't wanna get hurt or anything. So when you're, like about to wrestle a bear and your mind's thinking like wrestling this bear isn't a good idea that's trying to keep you safe but there are times in this world where you should realize that 
your mind keeping you safe can sometimes fuck with you because situations aren't always dangerous as your mind makes it be. So me getting rejected by that girl, she was like, yeah, I have a boyfriend. My mind's thinking it and going, that's dangerous, that hurts, you know, fuck that, and we're not going to talk about that. But it's not really a big deal in the end. So I manned up, I put my head down, and then I was going to go, all right, in five minutes, I'm going to just ask her, in five minutes, I'm going to talk to her. And uh, that's where I had it wrong again. You can't put a time limit. Like I said, just don't think, just do it. So I finally, I just said, all right, I'm just going to do it. Put my head up, looked at her, and said, hi, I'm Jason, what's your name? She told me, we had like a nice conversation, I found out that she did have a boyfriend actually, but I got a number, and uh, I was actually texting her earlier, and she's she's like a nice person, like I'm not, like I said, she has a boyfriend already, which is uh, kind of terrible, but it's not as bad as earlier when I thought that life was going to be over, not life, because you know, I wasn't going to like commit suicide or anything if she fucking, you know, didn't like me or anything, but... I, you know, I didn't want to ask her because what if she already had a boyfriend? Well, she did, and she was cool. You know, she's like a good, she's not a super good friend because I've only known her for like a couple hours, but but she seems like a good person that I can, you know. And now I have a good friend in philosophy, a pretty cute chick. So that's really what I'm trying to get across to you guys to just do it. And I tried telling that story because it's a lot more relevant to what you guys go through. Because we're the same age, you know, most people that watch this are, you know, around my age, 13 to 18, 12 to 18, something like that. So, uh, just do it, don't think about it, like, if you're afraid of roller coasters, just ride that bad boy, don't think about it, and afterwards, if you hate it, just don't go on it anymore, but at least you know that you gave it a shot. And that's how you should feel about something like women, too. I, like I said, I know what you guys go through, I did it today, I was scared to ass out that chick, but at the same time, I actually did it. And look where it got me. I got reject, not necessarily rejected, but now I got a friend in philosophy, and uh, that's that's really all I wanted to talk about. Until then, I'm PK, guys. I hope you meditate on this. Peace.